Great, so let's go over the directions together. The title tells you a lot about what we're focused on today. Alex, what is that? Ionic bonds. Okay, ionic bonds. We're only focused on representing ionic bonds today. You will learn how to represent covalent bonds tomorrow. So the directions say, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight, for each pair of elements below, draw an atomic diagram showing the electrons in different energy levels. That's the first step. Then you are going to draw arrows to show where the outer electrons will go. So you'll first draw the atoms, then draw arrows to show where the electrons go in an ionic bond. Then you will draw the resulting compound, or the formula. And finally, fill in the chart about what happened in the reaction. And you can refer to the sample. However, we're going to work through the first few together so that you fully understand what you're going to be doing. And I will tell you, we're going to follow the directions to a T on the first one, and then I'm going to show you an easier way to do it. So let's look at the first one, number one. We have two elements listed, lithium and chlorine. And you'll see here it has a little arrow, and then it shows you the resulting chemical formula. When I ask you to write a chemical formula, this is what I'm referring to. So what did the first step ask us to do, Zuan? Um, for each pair of electrons, draw an atomic diagram showing the different energy levels. Great. Draw an atomic diagram. So we are going to draw a Bohr diagram with the energy levels and all electrons for both lithium and chlorine. So let's start there. I'm going to draw my symbol first. And in which period will I find lithium, Justin? In which period on the periodic table? The second period. So therefore, I will need two energy levels. And in a Bohr diagram, we draw all of the electrons. Kaylee, so how many electrons will I draw on this Bohr diagram of lithium? Uh, draw two. Total three. electrons. Three total electrons. Its atomic number is three. So we fill up the first energy level with one, two. That one is now full. We go to the, third, the second energy level and draw our third electron. Now we also need to draw a chlorine atom. So I'll start with my symbol. Actually, I'm going to, here we go. In, what, in which period will I find chlorine, uh, Joey? In third. The third period, so I will need three energy levels. One, two, three. Oh. Cut it close there. Okay. And how many electrons, Omar? 17 total electrons, starting with my first energy level, which is full at 2, going to the next, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That one is full with 8, so we have to move on to the third energy level. 10 is what I have, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, so we have drawn the atomic model for both elements. Now, we learned in our jigsaw lesson and from our uh, collaborative Google document on Monday and Tuesday about ionic bonds transferring electrons. They give and take electrons in an ionic bond. But you also learned which types of elements like to give and which, el which types of elements like to receive electrons. Do you remember? <coughs> Tucker. Isn't it like metals tend to give more and then non-metals tend to take more? Exactly. And let's look at why. So you've got lithium here, which is a metal or a non-metal, everyone? Metal. It's a metal. Is it going to be more or less efficient? When we're talking about energy expended, energy that's occurring, is it going to be less energy or more energy to lose one electron to give it away or to gain 
seven more to have a full outer energy, energy level. Less energy to lose. Right. It's less energy to give one away than it would be to gain seven. So metals, especially those in groups one and two, are going to be much more likely to, or they are going to give electrons. Non-metals, on the other hand, which are, you'll find in, on the opposite side of the periodic table, it's less energy for them to gain a couple than to give away a bunch. So your metals will be the ones giving electrons, and your non-metals will be the ones receiving valence electrons. So we're going to draw arrows to show that transfer. So our metal, lithium, is going to give away its valence electron to chlorine, which needs how many? One. It needs one. What a great thing. There we go. What a great, what a great friend. That's right. So now, if we were to imagine, if lithium gave that electron, that valence electron away, that energy level would not be needed. It would only have one energy level full with two valence electrons, so it would have a full energy level. Chlorine, gaining that one, now also has a full energy level with eight. Okay. So we also talked about charges. When electrons are transferred, they take on a charge because those electrons are negatively charged. So when they move around, you also have positive protons in the nucleus, so you're going to have charges that occur when electrons move. So lithium gave away a negative piece, a negative electron. So what charge will this lithium ion become? Positive. It's going to become positive. If you give away a negative piece, that indicates that there are more positive protons in the nucleus. So this lithium atom now becomes a one positive lithium ion. When it takes on a charge, we don't call it an atom anymore. We call it an ion. The chlorine, on the other hand, gained a negative piece. So what charge will the chlorine ion have? Negative. One negative. Those are called oxidation numbers. So one thing I have not told you yet is those charges have a name and they are called oxidation numbers. So if you'll go ahead and write that, this is where we're going to be writing the oxidation numbers in our chart. But you need to be familiar with that term oxidation number. That's simply what we call the charges on the ion. So let's fill in our chart. Lithium was our first atom. It had one valence electron. Did it gain or lose that one electron? It lost one. And the oxidation number was a one positive, but you also include the symbol. So Li, one positive, that is your oxidation number. The chlorine had seven valence electrons. It gained one. And it, its oxidation number became one negative. So you'll see, if you look at both of these, one positive one and negative one cancel out, don't they? So when you have the resulting compound of LiCl, it is a neutral compound. Those ions cancel each other out within the chemical bond and form the resulting neutral compound. Is there ever a way, is like, is there, will there ever be a way where it's not neutral? So if you'll look to, we're going to name these today, ionic compounds take on an IDE at the end of the second element. So does anybody want to take a guess as to what we will call this compound? What do you think, Isaac? Lithium chloride. So we're going to go ahead and name them. You can say, we'll write our formula here. Although it did already give us our formula, I want you to practice writing them. And that is lithium chloride. Ionic bonds and an IDE. Not too challenging, right? I'll tell you, I'm going to make it easier on you, though. Instead of drawing Bohr diagrams from here on out, I'm going to allow you to draw Lewis dot diagrams. Yes. It's a time saver. So let's do the next one together using Lewis dot diagrams. Okay. 
So calcium is what we'll start with. We'll draw our Lewis dot diagram. So how many electrons will I draw on my Lewis dot diagram, Jin Sun? Two. I'm only drawing valence electrons on a Lewis dot diagram. One, two. And how about oxygen? How many valence electrons, Chloe, will I be drawing on oxygen? Um, six. Six. Very good. One, two, three, four, five, six. So calcium, being a metal, will use less energy by giving its electrons to oxygen. How many does oxygen need? Two. It has six. It needs two more to have the full outer energy level of eight electrons. How convenient. Okay, so let's draw our arrows to those missing spots that would take two. And complete our chart. Calcium had two valence electrons. And Harry, what was the transfer? It lost two. Very good. Lost two. And our oxidation number would be what, Jared? Jared? Uh, two, plus. two positive. Very good. Oxygen had six valence electrons. What was our transfer, Keyshawn? It gained two. Good job. And Alex, what would our oxidation number be? Uh, two. two negative. So those would then cancel each other out to form our neutral compound of CaO. It's already there for you, but it won't be always. And what can we name this ionic compound? Come on, you can do it. Tucker? Calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. Very nice. Now, I would be willing to let you go on your own. However, what do you notice about the next one? There's two Fs. Okay. As you can see in the formula, there's two Fs. So let's try this. We'll do, this is the last one we'll do together before I let you try the remaining on your own. They do get more challenging, but it's fun like a puzzle. <coughs> so let's start with beryllium, drawing our Lewis dot diagram. Ms. Kaylee, how many valence electrons will I draw for beryllium? Um, two. Two. Very good. And how about fluorine, William? Need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so fluorine needs one, correct? And beryllium has two. So that's not exactly a perfect fit. So I'm going to go ahead and give this beryllium electron to this fluorine. So the fluorine's full, but the beryllium does not have a full energy level. It has one left. That's not a full energy level. It has to get rid of that other electron so that the next energy level is full with eight. Or two. Whichever the element is. So you cannot have outstanding hanging out electrons. They all need to be given to fulfill the non-metal. So, what can we do? And the formula gives you a good tip, Ethan. You make another F. At no point did I ever say you have to have a one-to-one -one atom ratio. Just think about it. Water is H2O. That's two hydrogen to one oxygen. So they're compounds. Compounds are not always one-to-one. -one. So let's go ahead and draw our second fluorine. And then we can give our other valence electron from beryllium over to fluorine. Is everybody fulfilled now? Beryllium has given two. Each fluorine has received one with eight outer valence electrons on each fluorine atom. So, beryllium had two. It lost two with an oxidation number of two positive. Fluorine... <coughs> 
Huh? It had seven each, right? And you could say, you could either say gained one each or gained two. Either one would be fine. So now I'm going to write the oxidation number, but I didn't have one F. Have you learned yet how to represent more than one atom? Not the oxidation number. How would we represent that we have two fluorine atoms? But like the two, like the kind of two atoms. F two. F two. Okay, lots of good guesses. We don't put FF, not, but we do represent that. And a lot of you have said the little two. We call that a subscript, and I'll be talking more about that here next week. But that is called a subscript. So we have two fluorine atoms, so we put a subscript of two. And our oxidation number with both of those was what? Very good. So do those cancel out? Those cancel out, so we can write it BEF2. That's our formula. What do you think the name is? Coleman, you want to take a shot at the name? Is it, um, beryllium? It is beryllium. That's the way it starts. Take the next one and add IDE to the end. Give it a shot. Right. Yep. Beryllium fluoride. Good job. I'm going to let you take it from here. They do get more challenging, and I take away the formulas. So you'll see here on the rest of the first page, I provide you with the formulas, but on the back. Oops, that's not the back. No formulas. So please give this a try on your own, and we'll come back and reconvene and go over them towards the end of class.